This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website and online store with this all-in-one platform. Hi everyone, so this video is another episode of Ways to Fill Your Sketchbook where I take a prompt from my little cup of prompts and we fill a sketchbook page with the prompt. So today the prompt was to draw people inspired by different animals or plants. And at first I was like, oh, I don't really feel like drawing people. But then I was like, I don't really draw people a lot anymore. So I thought it would be, maybe it would be a bit refreshing to draw some people. And I kept having problems with my camera. Um, well, it wasn't my camera's fault, it was my fault. Where I kept forgetting to press record. I would get everything focused and then I would click on the on the like manual focus button. And I think my brain thought that was me clicking the record button and then I would draw for a bit and then I'd look and it's not recording and like, oh, I didn't press record. And it kept happening in this video. So if you see random chunks of like missing parts, that's why, but there really isn't a lot of like, you don't really miss much, honestly. So my first instinct um, for a plant, a person inspired by a plant is, um, a pilia plant, which is one of my favorite plants. They're like little, um, like lily pad looking things. I have one and it's finally doing pretty well because I get a lot of light in my apartment now, um, where before I would never get enough light to keep certain types of plants alive. But in this place I can, but now that it's becoming winter, well, it's fall, but it's going to be winter in a, in a few months. It's starting to get less sun and I can kind of see my plants starting to sort of slow down their growing. But I just wanted to like draw a girl with like a skirt made of pilia leaves and kind of like add them growing out of her. I, I really like this sort of trope of like a, a plant incorporating into a person and like growing out of their skin. I just think it's really fun to draw because there's not really like a right or wrong way to do it. You can just kind of add foliage and leaves and little things everywhere as you see fit. Also, um, if you want to submit a prompt for this series for me to add to my cup, you can always leave them in the comments of these videos and sometimes I go through the new ones and I'll add prompts to the jar so that we always have some fresh ideas. I think it's been a while since I've actually added some to it, so I will definitely be looking at the comments of this video for more ideas of things for me to draw. And I don't put everything in the jar, I just put things that I think would make for a good video and things that kind of like suit my style of drawing. Um, a balance of like fun things and challenging things. So another thing I wanted to talk about in this video was the fact that I don't really draw people that often anymore. And I used to be sort of afraid to like stop drawing tons of people, like human characters. I would be afraid to stop drawing them because in my head, I have like certain things that I like feel like I need to to draw in order to like prove myself as an artist. Because in my head, drawing people and like human anatomy is more difficult than animals. I feel like, um, and some people it might not be the same, but I do think it's it's more difficult to draw a human form than an animal. And um, I don't know if it's because it's actually harder to draw or if it's because we have a really good understanding of what people look like when we when we look at a drawing, we can really easily tell when something is off because we see people in everyday life. But when you draw animals, um, we don't really have that same sort of like idea of what of what certain species and certain animals look like. And it's not as easy to tell when something is wrong. And you can hide things with fur and like other imperfections. But with people, I just feel like people are a little bit more detailed. They don't have fur, they have skin and you have to be able to draw the proportions and the forms of the skin a bit better. But I feel like animals are like easier to make look right than people. That's just me though, but I have heard other people um, say the same thing. So I thought for a while, like, you have to draw people in your art in order to, like, show people that you're a good artist. But I don't know why I think this. It's like, I want people to know that I can draw people, but I honestly prefer to draw animals. I think I just really like 
the like feeling they give. Um, I just think animals, they're just so cute and they're cozy and I like to put clothes on them and dress them up as people. Um, but I also really like drawing animals and people interacting. Like I love the like the like trope of giant animal companion and small person. So it's like this girl has a giant dog or a giant bird or a giant cat. I, I really love that type of t- type of theme. Um, and I do enjoy drawing people. I feel like I've been in a very like heavily like animal phase drawing a lot of animals this last year. Um, and I think it's because I've just kind of like let myself draw things that make me happy and like the first things that pop into my head instead of trying to think of things that are kind of forced. Um, but now, now I'm thinking about it. Like I don't really draw a lot of people anymore and some people might not even like know that I draw people sometimes. Like I feel like it's been a long time. So this prompt was a little bit unnerving but exciting. I mean, I I do draw people in my sketchbook. I just don't like make illustrations that contain people that much compared to animals at least. Cause I just really like drawing animals. I'm trying to really embrace that like cozy woodland side of my art because it's what makes me the most happy and it seems to be what people respond to the most as well. I like to strike that balance of like things that I like to draw and finding like what things I like to draw do people like the most. And it seems like a lot of people like frogs and mushrooms and like cozy woodland critters. And I'm trying to just let myself draw things without worrying about being too repetitive. Cause I used to be very like hard on myself when thinking of things to draw and thinking like, oh, you've drawn that before. You've drawn that before. Um, You always draw this, you always draw that. But I don't actually think I have too many things that repeat themselves, but it was actually kind of funny recently. I was selling some of my art at an art market and I had two prints called Giant Dog and it was like one of them was a dog with a girl and it was like wintry sort of themed and another one was a fall forest with a dog and a girl sitting on the giant dog. So I had two drawings of the same sort of theme that were done like months apart. And I also have two sunflower cat drawings. So maybe it's starting to catch up with me and I'm starting to like repeat myself. But I think it's also fun to like reapproach an idea and do it in a fresh new way because like, I don't know, there's so many paintings of like fruit bowls. People do fruit bowl paintings. People do flower paintings all the time, landscape paintings, but there's always something different about each piece of art, even if the main idea is like the same. It's like the same category. Like you could give tons of people a prompt for like, I don't know, um, like draw a cat in a sunflower. Like I've done that a lot. And you'd probably get lots of different looking pieces of art. So I'm trying to not worry too much about things that I draw and like subject matter and just sort of let myself draw things that I, I feel like will will bring me joy. Um, and I think that's been working for me for a bit. There are definitely days where I don't really know what to draw. And then there's other days where I have a lot of ideas. Um, but I think drawing these people was a lot of fun. I definitely miss that. I really enjoyed drawing like human anatomy and their faces and like stylizing people is really fun. And maybe I'll get into another human phase. Um, I also really like combining people with animal features. It's just a lot of fun. That's why I did like a red squirrel girl. Cause I just thought like, oh, I'll give her squirrel ears and her hair will be red, like a red squirrel and then like a leaf cloak and uh, I wanted to give her a tail but I think I forgot to color it in which is kind of unfortunate but that's okay Um, maybe I'll add it in later. Now for a quick break to thank this video's sponsor which is Squarespace. So Squarespace as you probably know is an online platform where you can build your very own website or online store or blog. You can make it fit whatever aesthetic you want and there's so many templates to choose from. 
That's what makes it so easy when I was building my Squarespace website. I found a template that I like the look of and then I change little things about it to suit it to my needs. You can change the fonts, the color palettes, and you can even link to your social media accounts very easily and Squarespace adds these automatic little social icons which help people find your social media a lot more easily. I also love their portfolios and galleries feature. It's basically the main thing I use on Squarespace because I'm an artist, I need an online portfolio, and and it's really easy to do this with Squarespace because you just upload all your images, you can drag them around to rearrange them, and there's automatic image scaling on your site so that they all fit very nicely in a grid. And it just looks very sleek and professional. If you'd like to build your own website and this sounds interesting to you, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash gelarts and you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and on to the rest of the video. Another thing I wanted to talk about in this video was the fact that I haven't really been using mechanical pencils to sketch and I used to use them all the time and I recently discovered like I recently rediscovered it um, I pulled it out of my art supply drawers these like little mini drawers I have where I keep all my pencils and I was like you know what I'm gonna use some mechanical pencils I don't want to sharpen anything I just want to grab a mechanical pencil that I can like automatically click the lead and extend it and have like a, a, a tiny point of lead to draw with and I think it's it's really fun to just it's really fun to use mechanical pencils they used to be my favorite supply I think they're definitely still up there I love how the line is always like there, there's a limit to how wide the tip of the pencil can be because it has a certain like diameter to it whereas normal pencils you have to sharpen them if you want like a finer point but mechanical pencils don't really have a large range of thicknesses so it's just really nice to get that fine detail and that fine hatching. Um, I really enjoy that about them and I'm glad I have reintroduced them into my rotation. I used to use them all the time. Um, I think I cycle through art supplies sort of like regularly, like sometimes I'll get into ballpoint pens, then I'll get into mechanical pencils and then I'm like, you know what, I want to use regular pencils because I miss that like thicker bold line and um Sometimes I'll be more into markers. Sometimes I'll be more into felt tip pens. It just really depends on the kind of art I want to make at that time. And right now I'm liking the mechanical pencil. And I honestly wish I had one that was like sepia. Um, like a like the same color as the Terracotta Prismacolor Color Race pencil. If I could get that in a mechanical pencil, that would be really cool actually. But I would definitely recommend thin mechanical pencils. I just use 0.7, I think. I think I use 0.7 lead, like the standard lead, for sketching and adding lots of details. They also are very nice on smooth paper, um, but I kind of prefer my sketchbooks to have rough paper because I am a sort of mixed media artist. I like to use lots of different supplies in my sketchbook. And not, yeah, I'm not really a smooth paper person, but smooth paper is quite nice with like dry media, in my opinion. So, some people say that textured paper is better because it like holds onto the pigment. But honestly, I really like the way smooth paper looks with pencil because it just like the line itself is more solid. There's less texture interrupting the line and you can get really like smooth, solid hatching um, that just looks really like velvety and nice. I also wanted to draw like an old man that looked like a frog because my sister gave me the idea to do that for this video, like an old frog man, but I just ended up drawing a frog with a coat. It's not really a man, but it is sort of like um, an animal inspired by a person rather than a person inspired by an animal. I just couldn't really like, I didn't have the energy to like figure out how to make that work. So I was like, I'm just going to draw a frog in a coat. I think that's my my best option here and I didn't really like color it very detailed it's it's not the most detailed part the main thing is the red squirrel girl and the pilia girl I could easily like do tons of these but I, I just felt like doing a couple like little detailed sketches and I filled a little page in my sketchbook the sketchbook has been great so far I love it I do not um regret buying it well, it's not like I thought I would regret buying it, but I'm I'm really glad I, I got this sketchbook because I was kind of like humming and hawing over it because it was like $30 or something, well, Canadian dollars. 
or like $28. I don't know how much exactly, but honestly, I, I feel like it's worth it. Also, just a reminder that my shop updated recently. I have lots of new stuff there and I have my first ever washi tape designs. You can actually see it in this video, the washi tape that I use to stick down the sticky note. That's the washi tape. And my October Patreon package is only available to get until the end of October. You can get the fox and the little cute plants and a sketchbook page and a little frog sticker. I love the frog sticker. So if you wanna grab that, you don't have much time left, but you can go and sign up on my Patreon and you can also cancel at any time. So if you just wanna grab one specific package, you can literally join and then cancel and you'll still get it in the mail as long as you were charged for that month. Oh, something else I should mention is I actually used masking fluid before I did the watercolor because I remembered I had this, this masking pen where you can just kind of squeeze out the masking fluid and apply it using the little like metal applicator. And that way when you paint over it, it preserves that area of the paper. And once the watercolor is dry, you can rub off the masking fluid and it's white underneath. And I think it kind of helps preserve some white areas of the drawing, especially since I use pencil. It can kind of smudge around easily, so it's nice to preserve those areas and reveal them at the end and you have little white highlights. Um, masking fluid is great for that. The way I remove it is I just take the back of a paintbrush and I kind of like rub it and then you peel off the little balls of masking fluid and it works pretty well. I would definitely test your masking fluid before you do a painting because some of them like rip the paper or they have to be removed a certain way without ripping the paper. I think it's such a great tool. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. I actually had a lot of fun just like doing this like chill drawing session. Let me know if you are currently working on a sketchbook, if you drew while watching this, what you were doing while watching this video. And um, let me know which sketch is your favorite as always. I always like to know that. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.